Booster 3 performs its first static fire, Booster 4 begins stacking, a Pathfinder cargo bay is cut into a nose cone, and flaps with heat shield tiles are spotted, this week at Boca Chica. Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an overview of the SpaceX Boca Chica facilities as of late July 2021. All of the following photos and videos were captured by NASA Spaceflight team members Mary and Stephen Marr, as well as our team of robotic cameras. Over the past two weeks, we've seen a lot of work done on SpaceX's push to orbit with Starship. On July 12th, Super Heavy Booster 3 completed a cryogenic proof test on suborbital pad A. The test seemed to go well, as no leaks formed on the booster. Three Raptor engines were then installed, and Booster 3 performed a three-engine static fire on July 19th. Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that the test was a success, and SpaceX later tweeted out a picture of the engine test. Elon later added that depending on how assembly of Booster 4 goes, they may attempt a nine-engine firing of Booster 3. However, all three Raptor engines were later removed from Booster 3. On July 24th, the engines were seen being loaded onto the Raptor van for a trip back to SpaceX's test facility in McGregor, Texas. Whatever the reason, Booster 3 now stands engineless on Pad A, awaiting news of what its future entails. Back at the production site, Booster 4 has finally begun stacking in the high bay. Currently, it seems like only four sections have been joined together. However, several other sections have been spotted nearby. Also, the thrust domes, likely for Boosters 4 and 5, were spotted in various stages of assembly. These will hold the inner nine Raptor engines of the booster and supply propellants to the outer 20. Booster 4 will help carry Starship 20 to orbit later this year as part of the first orbital flight test. However, the exact time frame of that mission is still to be determined. Speaking of Ship 20, stacking is well underway on the orbital Starship prototype inside the midbay. Its tank section seems to be complete and sports a large array of heat shield tiles. <laughs> It'll need them. A potential nose cone for Ship 20 has also been spotted, sporting the attachment points for thermal protection tiles inside Tent 3. To help Starship survive the heat of re-entry, curved thermal protection tiles have shown up on the new aft flaps at the production site. These flaps will presumably be for Ship 20. Also, on July 22nd, Elon Musk noted the flap design has changed slightly from the previous Starship prototypes. They are now being made narrower, and therefore lighter, due to data obtained from flight testing. Mass is everything for Starship. For every kilogram of mass that you add to the vehicle, that's one less kilogram of payload that you can carry to orbit. So it's great to be able to shave off mass from areas where you really don't need it. Along with these new pieces for Ship 20, SpaceX stacked an unneeded nose cone and barrel section to test out Starship's payload bay design. These were likely intended for Ship 17, back when that was a thing. Crews cut a large hole out of the leeward side of the nose cone, then sliced the whole nose cone into two pieces not long after. Both sections were then moved to the scrapyard. Moving back to the midbay, work on the ground support equipment, or GSE tanks, has resumed after multiple weeks. The GSE 3 and 5 tanks reside near the midbay, and the GSE 6 tank is currently being stacked in the high bay. SpaceX appears to be adding stiffener rings to each of the tanks, potentially correcting previous design flaws that weren't addressed before GSE-1 and GSE-2 were rolled out to the orbital launch site. As of filming, GSE-1 is currently receiving similar modifications. Moving to the propellant production site, the gray mystery structure has had hydraulic rams installed along its perimeter. This structure may be used for simulating thrust from the 20 Raptor boost engines that will reside along the booster's perimeter during cryogenic proof tests. Speaking of Raptor boost engines, on July 20th, a new booster engine, RB2, nicknamed R2B2 by the McGregor crews, was delivered to the production site. SpaceX appears to be amassing booster engines in Boca Chica for future testing. At the orbital launch site, the ninth segment of the tower is being assembled. This section is a bit different, as a large beam juts out of one corner. It's possible that this is part of a future crane, but we'll have to wait and see what other work is done on the section. And just next door, 
crews are assembling a large yellow truss structure. This may end up being a fueling arm for the tower to help load propellant onto future Starship and Super Heavy vehicles. Black pipes and other small trusses were spotted as well, however their roles are less clear. And finally, the orbital launch table hasn't had much visible progress made. Equipment has been lowered into the center of the structure over the past few weeks, but other than that, there's no major changes on the outside. It seems that most of the work left is internal. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing or becoming a channel member, with several cool perks available for our channel members. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.